So I'd like to ask the following question. Can companion animals, such as dogs and cats and birds, just to name a few, benefit from viewing artwork? Especially those that are in more stressful situations, such as in a shelter, waiting for their next home, or maybe in a veterinary clinic, or even a boarding situation. We know, but yeah, places such that um, the walls are blank, there's not a lot of windows, and there's just a range of unfamiliar sights and sounds that the animals experience. We know people can benefit from viewing artwork when they're in stressful situations. Over the past few months, I've had the honor of participating in a program called Healing with Art. And the amazing folks um, that put this program together solicit artwork from local artists and they place it in the three Norris Cotton Cancer Centers here in New Hampshire, in Manchester, Nashua, and Lebanon. And they place the artwork in locations where the patients, their families, as well as the staff can easily see the art and interact with it. And they find that this program is very, very effective. The patients love it, you know, as well as their families and the staff. Everybody so appreciates that people have come together to put this program for them. And sometimes, you know, someone will look at a piece of art and they'll say, oh, you know, it'll remind me of, you know, somewhere I've been that I really enjoyed. Or sometimes someone will look at a piece and just say, oh, I really love that composition and I just really engaged with it. But I think one of the determining factors is by looking at a piece of art, you become focused on something else, something other than your stressful situation, and you feel better. So it's been, it, like I said, it's been a great experience being with that program. And so I was thinking, could we do the same thing with animals, right? So we know animals are incredibly intelligent, emotional, and highly sensory beings, right? Even if you don't have a companion animal, if you look at an animal, you can get the sense like, oh my gosh, are they relaxed and content? You know, are they more agitated and sad? It, it doesn't take much <laughs> to figure out how that guy's doing. Um, and if you have a companion animal in your life, you may have had the experience of watching them stare out the window for like 10 minutes and it's like, what are they looking at, you know? Or maybe you're up at your desk and our two dogs will come by and say, hey, it's time to go for a walk. We need to go check out and smell what's going on outside. And they drag you out, which is always to our benefit, right? It gets us outside. And, um, you know, or even when we open the fridge and somehow they know if we're pulling out the mustard or the whipped cream. If it's the whipped cream, they're both down there, whew, ready to get some of that. And um, they are tuned in at so many levels. And they really thrive on that perceptual stimulation. And in fact, when animals have a deficit of that stimulation, that's when they can really degrade quickly, both emotionally and physically. So again, can we use art to help lift them up, at least part way? Let's go. And uh, so if we were to create art for animals, what might it look like? What sort of subject matters would we consider? And uh, the folks at the Healing With Art program definitely focus on um, positive-oriented and soothing images. And they could be photos, paintings, multimedia compositions. It's really a nice array of artwork. But for animals, you could think about, it might depend on the type of animal that we're targeting, um, but maybe a scene where, let's say, a wide expanse field with a barn in the back, or you know, expansive beach, somewhere they could go running, or a nice scene out of a window into a garden, or even an empty couch. So I think there would be a range. But once we place artwork in front of the animals, I think we really need to work with the individuals at the individual shelter or um, location to have them help monitor. Like, is that a good fit? Is that, you know, how are the animals reacting to it? Um, you know, 
hopefully not negatively, we want a positive reaction, and maybe they're more interested in another piece that's like down the line. So I think that'll be a real key component to monitoring how this goes. So that's a subject matter, but then how would we actually make it? By understanding the human visual system, artists for eons uh, create their compositions by utilizing a number of, I wanna say little tricks or features or um, definitely intentions as they create their artwork. So for example, they'll be very specific about where they put a point of interest and how the different lines within the painting will lead you to that point of interest or in and around the painting. They're also very careful about how they manage their lights and darks, especially if you're trying to create something that has a three-dimensional effect to it, that's very important. And as well, the overall dark and light composition is, um, is something that can be, make a painting very impactful. It even gets down to the quality of the lines. Like, is that a sharp line with high contrast? And that'll definitely get your attention. Or is it something that's more blurred and, and sitting in the background a bit? Because if you have sort of a softer edge, it definitely push, pushes things out. And it's all geared toward when you look at a painting, like, does it look right? Does it look right? And do I want to keep looking at it? Or am I like, oh no, I'm going to the next one. So what do we know about animals' visual systems? Well, in terms of dogs, we always thought they were colorblind. But current research shows that they may actually have two color cone cells, one that's receptive to yellow wavelength light and the other that's more receptive to blue wavelength light. So actually, they may have vision, sorry, color vision, that's similar to an individual with red-green color blindness. In terms of lights and darks, we actually think they see similarly to, uh, to humans. But one of the biggest differences is in their visual acuity. So anything that's about you know, 20 to 25 feet in front of them is something we would consider to be in focus. Anything past that, like most of the audience, is actually pretty blurry. Like it's, they really are not distinguishing individuals as much as they would be seeing the different shades, but you know, their visual system is really geared for motion detection. So that's how they can stare out into the, you know, into the yard and see that chipmunk go. It's just going across their visual field. But they, nothing is really clear until it's close up. So if we were to make a composition for them, we might think about you know, getting the, the lights and darks right so the three-dimensional image looks as it may in reality. Um, using more blues and yellows to kind of get that visual aspects going. And if we were to put things in the background, like on an open field with a barn, make sure all that's pretty blurry, and then anything up front can have a nice sharp edge. So just as a, as a suggestion, like we need to experiment with this, but I think that um, is definitely something worth looking at. But one of the most uh, important aspects, I think, when we think about creating art for animals is the intention with which we have when we make that piece of art. Because I truly believe that objects contain the emotions and the feelings and, again, the intentions of the person that created it, right? So if you think about food, right? If, if someone who loves you makes you a meal, or someone who loves cooking has a, you know, cooks for you and you get to experience it, that, the taste and the, um, just the overall enjoyment of that meal is so extraordinary, right? And I think the same is true with artwork. When you look at a piece of artwork, you can tell, like, well, how was the person feeling? It, so, somehow it gets imbued. So when we think about making art for animals, I think we want to focus on the positive and the light and the beauty of that being, right? We don't want to think about, oh my gosh, you're in a shelter and that's a tough situation, because you don't want the sadness to come through. You want to create something that 
well, while you're doing it, and when they look at it, they know that we're celebrating the bright and light of that being and trying to help them on the next step of their journey. And just like we uh, are able to affect a whole community of people with the Healing with Art program, such as the patients, their families, and the staff, when we do this art for the animals, we're helping them but maybe we're also helping the prospective adopters as well as um, the staff at the individual clinics. So what I would like to do is I would like to begin working with either um, a facility or an organization who is interested in pursuing this idea of creating art for the benefit of animals. And I'd ask each and any of you that have companion animals at home Think about maybe taking um, a painting or a photo of a special time and blowing it up to a good size. Put it in their um, line of sight and test it out and see what they think. But when you do that, do that with the intention of doing it for their benefit. And with that, hopefully, we can establish a stronger relationship and connection between humans and our companion animals.